The difference between having a job and having a vocation is that a job is some unpleasant work you do in order to make money with the sole purpose of making money. And uh, there are plenty of jobs because there is still a certain amount of dirty work that nobody wants to do and that therefore they will pay someone to do it. There is essentially less and less of that kind of work because of mechanization. But if you do a job, if you do a job with the sole purpose of making money, you are absurd. Because if money becomes the goal, and it does when you work that way, you begin increasingly to confuse it with happiness or with pleasure. There is an epidemic, and I do mean epidemic in this country, of information abuse and information addiction, where people have come to believe that checking email 200 times per day, having a Blackberry to your head or in your hand while you're at dinner or on the subway or in your car or with your friends is the path to becoming more productive and more successful. In this day and age, it's really easy to live a mediated life where you're getting all your information and all your experience and even your friends are people that you're chatting with miles and miles away. I mean, you could conceivably, obviously, go to a job and it would be the most amazing job ever. But if it's not the most amazing job ever, if you really are sitting there just doing nonsense that you don't give a fuck about all day, there's nothing like that in all of nature. If you could tell someone that you're going to live a finite life, this, you only have this amount of, let's manage that life and let's see how you handle it. How much time do you think you'd spend sitting in a fucking box doing some shit you don't like? You wouldn't. You would just spend nuns. You put zero in the box. You would say, well, what, what percentage of your day do you want to sit down and do something you don't want? Zero. And so you get on antidepressants to try to stop the feeling. You get on fucking this or that. You start drinking. You get addicted to drugs to try to avoid the fucking... Uh, the, to, uh, to just to avoid taking yourself out of autopilot. Let's just put it off till tomorrow to go to the gym. Let's put it off till tomorrow to go outside and run. Let's put it off till tomorrow to do the push-ups. Let's put it off till tomorrow to tell that fuck face to get the fuck out of our lives. Let's put it off till tomorrow to live. And if you're like me, every time that voice comes into your mind, you'll think, how many fucking tomorrows do I have? How many tomorrows have I put off? You'll find that you'll, you'll, you're, you're, you're surrounded by stacks of, of tomorrows that have become yesterdays. But life can be a lot broader than that when you realize one simple thing. And that is that everything around us that we call life was made up by people that are no smarter than you. Sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. If anybody told me just having the courage to get started, that it was possible that I could earn more, that I can touch people's lives, that I could do things that I didn't even realize that I could do. I can just tell you right now, one of the things that you have to do is just decide, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this happen. The first step before anybody else in the world believes it is you have to believe it. There's no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. You have to completely unplug and reset. That means that you need to take a step back, forget about what people expect you to do, forget about what's popular, and really look at what works and what is consuming your time. It's easy to get tied up in the idea that money and things are a reflection of how wealthy you are. But if you think about time as your truest form of wealth, then you'll realize that we're all born equally rich in time. Life is an opportunity. Should we 
how much pressure should you put on it? How many places should you go? How many drugs should you take? How many sexual configurations should you experiment with? How many professions should you... Uh, uh, and it depends, I think, the question is, how seriously do you take it? So it's an incredible opportunity to be born in a human body. The whole, the whole biosphere is here to support us. Four billion more or, or more years of evolution have led us to this point where we can make these very fine distinctions between, between good and evil, between darkness and light, where we can make choices that will impact upon us and upon others in, in profound ways. This is, a, this is an extraordinary opportunity. So I would say, don't waste it. You know, you were given this chance. It's extremely improbable that we should be alive, that we should be here thinking, feeling, sharing. The fact that we're alive throws open the whole game. Means anything is probably possible. Because almost everything all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. Being realistic is the most commonly traveled road to mediocrity. Why would you be realistic? What's the point of being realistic? It isn't how good you are, it's how wily you are, which was the Greek virtue of Odysseus, you know, that was always his epitaph, or his epithet, was uh, he was wily Ulysses. You are in a sacred battle, and if you win this battle, this wrestling match, this combat session, this fucking mortal battle against this terrific foe, which can transform into so many delightful things, then you will climb out of it a, a warrior. There are things that you have in you that you don't even know, but until you get outside of, outside of your comfort zone, you will never discover it. You have something special. You have greatness within you. But in order to manifest your greatness, you've got to put yourself in a perpetual state of discomfort. Yes, you've got to challenge yourself. You've got to raise the bar on yourself. You've got to get busy. You've got to work your plan. Even if you've got a job right now, you've got to work yourself out of it. You've got to have an exit date where you say, hey, I've had it. It's time for me to do me to pursue my dream, to work my plan, to implement the things that I want for myself and for my family and for, for my kids. And, and what is your legacy? What do you want to do for yourself? You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path and that will make all the difference. And I like to think of travel as sort of a metaphor for how you live your life. Life is a journey. We don't beat the reaper by living longer. We beat the reaper by living well and living fully. For the reaper will come for all of us. The question is, what do we do between the time we're born and the time he shows up? Because when he shows up, it's too late to do all the things that you're always going to kind of get around to. Leaving your normal habitual life to, um, to go out and travel in earnest. Instead of taking a one-week holiday, um, you take a year or six months or six weeks or two years or five years. Um, but it's a way that you're going out sort of as a seeker, not really as a consumer on vacation. You're not taking an escape from your life, but you're sort of going in to what you want your life to become. You're, you're leaving yourself open to new experiences in that way.
It is not the things we do in life that we regret on our deathbed. It is the things we do not. No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet, death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it. And that is as it should be, because death is very likely the single best invention of life. It's life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. Right now, the new is you. But someday, not too long from now, you will gradually become the old and be cleared away. Sorry to be so dramatic, but it's quite true. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. So live your life that the fear of death can never enter your heart. Trouble no one about their religion, respect others in their view, and demand that they respect yours. Love your life, perfect your life, beautify all things in your life. Seek to make your life long and its purpose in the service of your people. Prepare a noble death song for the day when you go over to the Great Divide. Always give a word or a sign of salute when meeting up or passing a friend, even a stranger when in a lonely place. Show respect to all people and grovel to none. When you arise in the morning, give thanks for the food, for the joy of living. If you see no reason for giving thanks, the fault lies only in yourself. Abuse no one and no thing, for abuse turns the wise ones into fools and robs the spirit of its vision. When it comes your time to die, be not like those whose hearts are filled with fear and death, so that their time comes they weep, they pray for more of the time, and live their lives again over and over in a different way. Instead, sing your death song and die like a hero going home. Thank you.